Sweet. Time to test these new speakers with some jams. Looks like I won't be able to blast my music after all. But there is a way I can listen to music without interrupting others. Headphones are just small speakers that sit outside or inside of our ears. We can use them to listen to music, audiobooks, and podcasts. Interestingly enough, we can create simple music using our micro bit, and we can play these sounds through a speaker, or if we don't want to disturb anybody, through some headphones. But first, let's look at how speakers work. We start with a permanent magnet that's in a tube or donut shape. We have one side that's north and the other that's south. We put a coil of wire around another tube or rod. Together, this coil and rod are known as a voice coil and they move independently in and out of the magnet's hole. When we put an electric current through the wires on the voice coil, we create an electromagnet. One side will be north and the other will be south, just like our permanent magnet. And like permanent magnets, opposite poles will attract, which means the voice coil will move toward the magnet. If we switch the direction of the electric current, the poles on the electromagnet will swap. Now, we have the same poles facing each other, so the voice coil will be repelled away from the permanent magnet. To use this motion to create sound, we add a cone of paper, wood, plastic, metal, or some other material to create a sort of diaphragm. As we switch the electric current back and forth, the voice coil moves in and out of the permanent magnet, which moves the diaphragm. This rapid back and forth motion creates pressure waves in the air, and we call these pressure waves sound. You can see the individual parts clearly on this small speaker. The permanent magnet is visible on the outside of the voice coil, sitting underneath the clear plastic diaphragm. The upper lip of the diaphragm is held to the metal casing by a flexible suspension material. The voice coil is held in place by a ring of flexible material known as a spider, which allows the voice coil to move just up and down. If I switch the electric current back and forth through the speaker really fast, like 20 times per second, you can see the speaker diaphragm vibrate. However, you can't really hear 20 hertz. Now, if you change this to 440 hertz, the note A4, you can hear it. The problem we run into with most speakers is that it takes a lot of force to move the diaphragm back and forth. Well, relatively a lot of force. I can move it easily with my hand, but it takes a lot of electricity to make the electromagnet strong enough to move it. In order to produce the electricity necessary to drive speakers like this, we need a special piece of hardware known as an amplifier. An amplifier takes an electric signal, say your favorite song, and then increases the amount of current going out to other devices, like speakers. Some amplifiers can be small, like this simple board and they're good for driving small speakers like my clear plastic one. Some amplifiers can be big, like the one built into the stereo receiver. These are capable of powering large home theater sound systems with multiple speakers. These shelf speakers have built-in amplifiers, but even if you don't have an amplifier available to you, you can still power very small speakers with the micro bit, like the ones found in headphones. If you pull apart the casing on most headphones, you'll find a small speaker for each ear. Let's use this to play a song. To get music from your micro bit, connect an alligator wire to the ground pin, we'll use black, and connect another to pin zero, white in this case. Connect the black wire, the one attached to ground, to the lowest ring on the headphone plug. Then connect the white wire, the one attached to pin zero, to the tip of the headphone plug. This will send our electric signal to the left speaker of our headphones. In MakeCode, go to Logic and drag an if-else block to forever. Click the plus button on the if-else block to get an else-if condition to appear. From input, drag button A is pressed block to the if condition. Drag another to the else-if condition. Change the second one to button B. From music, drag a ringtone hertz underneath if and drag a second one to underneath else if. If you click on the tone, you should see a keyboard pop up. We'll use it to change which note is played. Change the button A note to middle E, and change the button B note to middle G. We want the notes to stop playing whenever we release the buttons. Click on advanced and open pins. Drag a digital right pin block to underneath else. We'll want pin P0 to be set to zero when no buttons are pressed. 
download and copy this program to your microbit. You now have a super simple instrument. Press the A and B buttons to play some kind of two note song. Please be careful, the sounds from the microbit can be quite loud. Test the notes first before putting the headphones in or next to your ears. You can play various notes and tunes on your microbit using small speakers and headphones. If you have an amplifier available, you can really crank that volume up to high levels. Just be sure not to annoy your neighbors. Besides, that will only lead to treble.